Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and one of the best values out there for a laptop at the moment is the Moto 14. I bought one the other day to check it out because a lot of you were curious, and we're going to be doing a full review of this Ryzen-based 14-inch laptop here in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what we can do with this very low-priced laptop. Now, I bought mine at Walmart.com for $299, and then when I checked Walmart's site this morning, the price went down to 249 and that was the price that a lot of other people were buying this at a few weeks ago. So it looks like Walmart is adjusting the price on a pretty regular basis here. So if you don't see it for 249 keep an eye on it because it's likely going to go back down to that price. Walmart does not do any price guarantees, so if you paid 299 like I did, they will not refund you the difference. I tried, they wouldn't do it. Uh, so just have some patience if you don't see the $249 price tag. But even at $300, it's not a bad deal. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has an AMD Ryzen 3 3200U processor inside, along with 4 gigabytes of RAM. I'll talk a little bit more about some limitations that they've baked into this in a second. You've got a 14-inch 1080p display, uh, which looks nice. It's nice and sharp. Colors are good, the text and everything looks nice on it for reading, but it's a bit on the dim side, which is kind of par for the course on these low-cost laptops. But I think it looks pretty attractive, and it's smaller than some of the other 15-inch Ryzen base machines that we've looked at. Up here, you've got your webcam, but this also supports Windows Hello for face recognition to log in, and that's a feature we don't typically see on lower price machines. Uh, so there's no fingerprint reader, but you do get uh, the face recognition if you want that. Uh, it's got 128 gigabytes of storage built in. That's a solid state drive and NVMe. And we took it apart a little bit earlier on the extras channel. And you can actually add a second NVMe drive into this, which was nice to see two of those slots available. Uh, we did see room for a SATA drive inside as well, but there's no port to plug it in or adapter in the box. So it looks like those two NVMe drives are pretty much it. Now the big limitation on this machine, which we'll be talking about throughout the review, is that it only supports single channel memory. And on AMD processors, they don't do as well with a single channel of RAM. They like two RAM channels. And unfortunately, on this one, you can only use one memory stick because it's only got one slot for memory. And as a result, it's going to cripple a lot of the graphical performance that this chip can provide. So in many ways, uh, you're going to do better with a Acer uh, Slim 5 or perhaps the Lenovo 330S that we've looked at that have dual channel memory that allows this chip to run at its best potential, especially in graphically intense applications like video editing and gaming. And you'll see some examples of that as we get our way through the review here. Now you can upgrade the RAM, so you can pull out that single stick of four and put in an eight gigabyte stick, for example. So that will give you perhaps slightly better performance for memory hungry applications, but it still would not be as good as what you would get with a dual channel configuration. It's pretty lightweight too, two and a half pounds or 1.2 kilograms. Uh, so it won't weigh you down all that much. Uh, the display goes down to about this position here. It is not a touch display, of course, but you do have a good amount of uh, adjustment that you can make on the display and the hinge uh, feels pretty good, at least at the moment here. Uh, there are a number of ports to look at on here. You've got a Kensington lock for locking it down on your desk. What I really like about this is that it's got gigabit ethernet built in, so you don't have to carry around any dongles with you if you want a reliable network connection. You can just pop it in right there. You have a USB 2.0 port here. I would suggest not plugging in hard drives here just because this is a slow port, but it's good for keyboards and mice and that sort of thing. You have a USB 3.0 port next to it though, which is faster. That's where I would put that stuff. Uh, you've got a headphone microphone jack here. I'm not sure what this little uh, carve out is on the side. This might be for the Wi-Fi antenna or something. There's nothing underneath that. So it just is a little oddity of the case, which is repeated here on the other side. Over here, you've got a USB type C port. This is data only. It doesn't do display output or power, just data. Uh, here you've got another USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, and then your power goes in here. Uh, the keyboard isn't bad. It's backlit, which is nice to see on a low-cost laptop, so that's good. 
Uh, the trackpad's okay. It feels a little squishy, um, so not the best trackpad I've used, but again, for the price point, I'm not complaining all that much. They do have a really odd way of turning off the trackpad, though. You can just double tap in the corner there to disable it, and a little green light will light up when the trackpad is not active, and then you can click it again to turn it back on. I'm not sure why they did it that way versus just having a keyboard command for that, but there you go. Uh, so that is that. And then on the front here, you've got a micro SD card slot, so you can pop in a card. Uh, the cards will sit flush to the case here, so you can leave it in all the time. So if perhaps you want to bring a lot of media with you or something, you can uh, very easily make use of that. Uh, this is not a fanless laptop. We'll talk about its thermal performance in a little bit. Uh, so you'll want to keep this area clear uh, so that you can keep the cooling going to keep the laptop running at its best performance. So if it's on a desk, it's fine. Uh, just be careful of putting it on carpet or on a bed or something where you can't get that airflow going. And that's going to do it for the hardware. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, we're going to start off with some web browsing. We're going to take a look at the NASA.gov homepage over Wi-Fi. Everything rendered up very quickly, no real issues there. So that was a good experience on a multimedia rich website. We also headed over to YouTube and looked at a 1080p 60 video, 60 frames per second. Uh, that ran fine too, no drop frames, all good on the web browsing front. And this is one area where having a single channel of memory isn't going to be as big of a deal for the average user. So if you're doing email and web browsing and just want a low-cost Windows machine that can run a few other applications as well, it's going to be perfectly fine for that and you won't have any real problems there. Uh, we ran the browserbench.org speedometer test, which gives us a way to compare this one to some of the other Ryzen machines that we've looked at, and it's pretty much on par. We got a score of 87.2 on version 1.0 of that test and 51.7 on version 2.0. Uh, take a look, though, at the Acer Aspire 5. That's got the same chip as this one with dual-channel memory, and it did a little better on that test, but I don't think you would really notice that in the course of just browsing the web and doing your email. So overall, not a bad purchase here, again, for doing the basics like web browsing, like Microsoft Word and Office and Excel and PowerPoint and everything. But when we get into some more graphically intense stuff like gaming, it's a different story. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to start off with GTA 5. And at the lowest setting, 720p, we were getting 20 to 35 frames per second with occasional lag spikes here and there. And by comparison, when we looked at the Acer Aspire 5 a few months ago, which has the very same chipset as this one, it was able to achieve about 30 frames per second at 1080p because it's got that second channel of RAM and can make the most of that Ryzen 3 chipset on board. Uh, so this game is a great example of the differences between single and dual channel memory. Uh, we also ran Rocket League. Uh, the lowest settings, 1080p, it was very playable, 55 to 80 frames per second. Uh, but again, on the Aspire 5 that we looked at before, uh, you would get higher image quality with similar frame rates. So there, again, you can see how having that second channel can make your gaming experience a little bit better. Uh, we also ran Fortnite, lowest setting, 720p, about 30 to 45 frames per second. Uh, the Witcher 3, low setting, 720p, 15 to 25 frames per second. Again, we'd do a little better if we had that second channel of RAM. But if you're into older games like Half-Life 2, that one will run at 1080p over 100 frames per second. So if you are you know, looking at some older stuff, I think this might do just fine with that. But if you really do want to play games on a low-cost laptop, I think finding one with the Ryzen chipset with the option for dual-channel memory is going to be a better experience. And the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test gives us a better example of some of those performance disparities. Uh, here we got a score of 6,416 on the Modal 14 uh, compared to 7,389 on the Acer Aspire 5 with the very same processor but two channels of RAM. And as you can see here on graphics test 1, the Acer got 51 frames per second, the Modal 37. Uh, the Acer on the second test got almost 43 frames per second. The modal came in around 34 or so, but the CPU score is about the same on the physics test. And there you can see in a really concise way the differences here between single and dual channel. And again, this one doesn't have the option to go to that second channel 
whereas many other low-cost Ryzen laptops do. So if you are looking to play games or do some video editing or something, this one might be a little slower than something you can get for maybe a little bit more money that offers that second channel. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 98.5%. That's a passing grade. 97% is the threshold to achieve a passing score. Uh, this means that as the computer is placed under heavy sustained load, it likely will perform the same across the board, which is a good thing. A lot of these lower priced laptops tend to slow down uh, the hotter they get. Uh, this one seems to keep itself pretty cool. Uh, the fan isn't all that noisy either, which is a good thing too. So altogether good stuff there. Uh, battery life though is not so great. You're gonna get about five or six hours or so doing the basics. Maybe you could squeeze a little bit more out if you dim the display down further. Uh, AMD Ryzen laptops aren't known for great battery life, especially at this price point. So it's in line with others out there. And again, we're not gonna dig them too heavily given the low price. It also runs Linux pretty nicely here. So Wi-Fi works, audio works, the video is detected properly. Uh, altogether, a very nice Linux experience. So if you were looking for a low-cost Linux machine, uh, maybe you could load Linux up on the second NVMe and kind of dual boot between Windows and Linux if you want. Uh, so a pretty good experience here, no, no concerns whatsoever. Uh, it also has THX sound, and although it's not going to be mind-blowing, uh, I did find that the audio to be pretty pleasant on this. It's got very nice stereo separation, some good spatiality to it. Uh, so overall, the sound is pretty good for watching movies or playing games. But of course, you'll do better uh, when you plug in a pair of headphones or use the Bluetooth here. But altogether, I think it's a pretty good value. Just keep in mind this, you know, the performance issues with the single channel RAM. Uh, it's very lightweight. It's certainly affordable. It'll perform better for this price versus what you might get out of an Intel machine. And you've got some upgrade options for both RAM and storage, which I think is great for people that like to add a little bit to their computers after their purchase. So altogether, something I can recommend. Uh, just keep those graphical limitations in mind, and I think you'll be quite happy with the Motul 14. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.